was sloppy, but it is still time to hug it out uh, because that is a Bruins win, three to one over the Buffalo Sabres. Welcome back to Into the Den, everybody. I am your host, 100 Backs. This game was sort of reminiscent of games last year and not necessarily in the best of ways. I know that I like to to go down these games in sort of chronological order, sort of like it's sort of like LFR, sort of like a low, low quality a Bruins fan likes to do uh, with its low quality a reactions. But uh, uh, but just for but just to uh just to give you a, a an idea of how bad uh, this game was for the uh, for the Bruins to start out uh, to start out and how awful uh, we looked uh, and how it definitely was reminiscent like. We we come out of the gate slow, and it takes us the rest. Of the, it takes us uh, most of the rest of the game to um, to get our asses in gear. Of our first actually good offensive shift came thirty six minutes into the game. We were almost into the second intermission before the bro and said, "Oh shoot, there's a game tonight." Except for one in Bruin, our starting goalie for tonight. Keith Kincaid, who would have expect uh, who expected this? Uh, uh, you hear that the Bruins are going to uh, to Buffalo. Who uh, who are the first two Bruins players that, that you think of? Taylor Hall and uh, Taylor Hall and uh, and Lena Selmark. You think okay, this is going to be a revenge game for uh, both of these guys, even though both of them, uh, even though both of them already had revenge games against Buffalo last season. But uh, but Olmark is not in. In that for tonight, he uh, Walmart was not in that for tonight. They gave him the uh, night off so that he can uh, be in tomorrow's game. Yes. Oh boy, that's gonna be a Jack Stadnika revenge game. Wonderful. But this revenge game for um, for Taylor Hall again. He already had uh, three. <clears throat> he already had uh, a few of those last uh, last year. Uh, this is also Kevin Pollock's fifteen hundredth game, one thousand five hundredth game. Um, officiated in which that's a, that's quite a milestone. <clears throat> we already spent most of it tonight calling uh, calling bad penalties against the. I know I know that a lot of people uh, are like eh, yeah blaming the refs. Is, uh, I know that a lot of people uh, like say they blaming the refs is a, a massive cop out and yes it absolutely is the bro uh, the Bruins are good enough to not uh, have uh, the Bruins are good enough uh, and know better. To not use the refs as an as an excuse. But holy crap! Somebody call child protective services because is the way that uh, because the way that Charlie McAvoy is being treated is horrible. Right. The space bar there. God. Damn. They're off to a slow start offensively, uh, uh, but they uh, but they get what should be a, a bit of a reprieve with Owen Power going for. Or cross checking. Honestly, the Owen Power and Rasmus Dahlin in pairing, probably the best offensive pairing tonight. Probably one of, if not the best offensive pairing tonight. I think that the only thing that really came close was uh, was Grizzlick McAvoy. It was Grizzlick McAvoy. But still, Owen Power goes for cross checking. Should be a, it should be a time for the Bruins to to get at least some sort of. Uh, offense generating, in, in, right? I mean, they're play, they're playing five, uh, five uh, forwards on this uh, this power play. Why the hell are you doing that? How the hell did Tate Thompson get the, uh, get the, uh, puck? Krejci, uh, why did you just let him have it? Have it? How is he weaving through the, uh, this this neutral zone? He's six seven. How did he get that shorthanded goal? No, I'm uh, now I'm t- I'm honest. Honestly, I'm not too surprised. Tage Thompson, I might it, Tage Thompson might just be my favorite player on the in the say, it might just be one of my favorite players in the NHL. A lot of uh, my friends, as soon as Tage as soon as he got that insane contract in the offseason, and that was like seven years for fifty four million dollars, I think I forget it. Seven years for a uh, for like fifty million uh, in plus. Uh, a lot of my friends were like. What the hell? This dude scores thirty-eight goals in one season, and all of a sudden they think think that he's worth that much. Out, 
uh, here's the thing. There's a big difference between Alex Galchenyuk scoring 30 goals in a season and, and, and giving him a bunch of money and Tage, and giving Tage Thompson a bunch of money for scoring 38 goals, goals in a season. Alex Galchenyuk, he, uh, a lot of it definitely felt kind of, uh, I wasn't really convinced on uh, a lot of his, his goals. I, I don't think many people were really convinced on his goals. Uh, on his goals and uh, in terms of uh, his other playmaking abilities either uh, be it on offense or on defense not really he wasn't really too much to uh, to get your uh, to get you hot and bothered Tage Thompson that dude is six seven hmm. A- after Chara retired he is now the tallest player in the NHL oh and he and he is as agile as as they come he is Tage Thompson is fantastic. Even if he doesn't put up 38 goals in a season again, his his mere presence is a threat on the ice. Big enough to, he's big enough to put you to pick you up and just throw you into the boards himself. In fact, you I'm, I think if you put him and put and put Owen Power on top of him, standing on his head, they are. The two of them are big enough to uh, to be an entire uh, to be like a like an entire bridge underpass. That's how big both of them are. It just so happens that Tage Thompson is able to uh, is able to uh, continue to. Ha- it just so happens that both of them have uh, insane amounts of agility for their their size. Anyway, we get to the, we get to more uh, we get to the start of the bad penalties. Uh, Bergeron going for. Or holding as he's going for a line change, he does a really weak a little bit of. He's not really great with, uh, with this isn't really too much holding. It's sort of like a like a slight disruption as he's going, in for, into the uh as he's going to the bench, and somehow that's enough for or holding. And Coil flubs on a shorthand breakaway uh, that's handed to him from Nosek. Uh, it takes us to the end of the first period. It Bruins down one nothing. Don't re- doesn't really look too good. And and the Bruins, eh, eh, and to start the second period, and we at least we eh, kill the rest of the penalty. Eh, which that's the best thing about the Bruins this in, in, in the first half of the game. There were a bunch of shit penalties, like both penalties against uh, against McAvoy. Eh, eh, like great. Not only can we not complete two passes in a row without uh, without completely shitting our pants, but McAvoy, but Charlie McAvoy, he goes for slashing, even though he completely whips. He the only thing he slashes at is uh, is air molecules, and he go and he gets two minutes for it. If you watch that back, he does that is not he does not touch anything. Hmm. And he just complete, and he doesn't get, and he just, and they're just like to to the box, and then the Bruins kill it, and then immediately afterwards, like less than five seconds after he's out of the box, he he bumps someone from behind, and he bumps someone from behind, and and they go to the ground, and he gets two for tripping, like at the very like. Props to the refs; they didn't call that a slew foot, and uh, uh, and and he's not being given, and he's not going to have a hearing and get suspended for three games. Games, but still, that's not tripping. That's not slashing. What the hell are you doing to Macavoy? Whatever. The biggest now, honestly, the biggest thing that uh, that the Bruins should take away from this game is that Keith and Kane uh, played out of his mind. Mm. Which is both a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is that the uh, is that uh, our third string goalie is uh, is looking um, uh, looks amazing. The second, uh, the bad part about it is that he has to be amazing because what the hell is our defense doing? The entire first, uh, the entire first half of the game, our uh, our defense uh, cannot clear the puck to save their uh, to save their lives. Is even is and again. It takes us 36 minutes into the game to get our first good offensive shift. But, but still, 
but even then, Keith Kincaid, amazing, uh, amazing job. You ever watch Mighty Mouse? Uh, you ever watch Mighty Mouse? It's a little bit of an old reference, a little bit of obscure, but here I come to save the day. Kincaid is flying around the increase, swinging his arms around, uh, just flopping everywhere, and nothing went, nothing went past him except for that one Tage Thompson in goal. Although, again, to be fair. It's why you don't put five forwards on the penalty kill, on the power pole. Anyway, near the end of the first period, near the end of the first period Rasmus Dahlian ends up going down the, um, the uh, ends up going down the, on the tunnel, oh, oh, for some injury maintenance. That's never a good look. It's it always sucks when a, uh, when a young guy goes to the, goes to the uh, uh, when the young guy goes to the infirmary, he, and Ilya Bushkin goes to the goes to the penalty box for roughing for roughing. Thing. And this is where, oh boy, my favorite player of all time, Patrice Bergeron, and and he just goes knee down on on a uh, on a off a Bergeron rebound on a Marchand rebound on uh, Marchand just uh, just whacks it. it it bounces off Craig Anderson which honestly the Bruins should not be the this should have been at least four one and. And the Bruins should have uh, done so much better against 41-year-old Craig Anderson in net. It, it, but uh, Bert, but Marshan, uh, but Marshan uh, smacks it. It bounces off of Craig Anderson. Marshan, uh, Marshan's got got a knee down, and he he just gets it on the short. It gets it on the backside to tie the game at one on the power uh, on the power play after an uh, after the Bruins go an abysmal 0 for five against. And it's Calgary on uh, on Thursday. Third period, third period begins. The Bruins, uh, the Bruins start to look uh, like the Bruins that we've seen uh, that we saw uh, earlier this season. And it uh, this game kind of felt like uh, you put a uh, you put an exponent into the, you know, the graphing calculator and uh, and you just see in the uh, and the first the first period uh, the first period and a half were, were sort of like the. Uh, uh, we're, we're sort of like it uh, going near one, near one, and then it just, whoosh, or like what is it? I don't know the the one where it's like one over x or something like that. Uh, you put that in a graphing calculator, and you see it. Uh, you see uh, everything up until like two, oh, uh, oh, uh, as like a horizontal line, and then and it just rockets up forward. And there's there's one thing that really happened. Uh, there was one moment in this in the third period that really kind of uh, frustrated me. David Krejci. I love him. I love I love everything that he, he brings to the Bruins. He is not ready to come back to uh, at full strength. It wasn't just it wasn't just the. Uh, it was not just the uh the freaking it wasn't just the turnover to Tage Thompson and but Krejci, but also in this in this game he he just completely bails and allows for a, a turnover to JJ Paterka or or whatever the hell his name is I think it's Paterka and it's, it's like come on dude come on I know. I know that you know that you are not healthy enough for this. This isn't, this isn't really like a, uh, this isn't uh, like a Clifton in, in, in again, it's, this isn't really like Connor Clifton in that game against uh, the Leafs last year uh, where he, he had like stupid amounts of turnovers and was responsible for like four, uh, for like two goals was at the, was for the Leafs. Is yes, where I'm like, get off my team right now. Thank God that thank God that he's still on here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I was thinking it back then. Just get off my team right now, Connor. But it's definitely like, dude, just stay on IR for a little bit more. If if this is how you're gonna play right now, stay on IR. But screw that. We get. We got a historic moment for the Bruins, uh, for one particular Bruins player, Jacob Zaboral. Oh, 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 stay, 
Uh, oh, uh, oh, for oh, be still, my uh, my Jacob's immortal loving heart. I've been saying pretty much since the beginning, uh, give this man a healthy season, and and he will show us that uh, he deserves to be on this uh, this roster. And holy crap, not only has he been in uh, pretty good this, uh, to start the season, and I mean, sure, he's uh, he's had a healthy scratch a few times games and it sucks but Zaboral with his first NHL goal well, off of uh, Tomas Nosek pretty much playing the in the team's lightning rod he's got like three uh, three Sabres defensemen all uh, all on him and uh, and he just passes it right to uh, right to Zaboral who's got absolute daylight until he, he has the puck on his uh, on his stick and then he has and then he just snipes through traffic and my and buddy put uh, put some uh, gosh darn tape on that uh, puck you earned it man you you earned it after the Ford F150 final five start it's, I like how I'm sponsoring the final five minutes I like how I'm doing the uh the Ford F-150 file five uh, spot for them um uh, without being paid for it. Hey Ford, sponsor me. Actually, no, actually, no, I know about your company's history. Never mind. Uh also your cars kind of suck. Anyway, I'm getting off track. Uh Pasternak, uh, uh the uh, was it the perfection line is back is back, by the way. Uh, uh look, it's never it's never good when the Bruins have to get the perfection line back. Heck, I mean, it works a lot during uh, during the, uh, from like 2018 to 2020. It works, uh, it works so well. It's not working now. It, it, it hasn't, it, it hasn't been working since it's about halfway through November or you know, last year. It has not been work. It has not been working. Thing. But hey, he put it back. Uh, Monty put it back together, uh, and uh, and it uh, it created a second goal for my favorite player of all time, Patrice Bergeron, and pop, uh, uh, on a play that he started uh, with a uh, just chipping a forecheck to uh, to uh, to Pasternak, who settles it on his stick. On a stick in midair, freaking amazing hand-eye coordination, and and he passes it to Marchant, and who who holds and then backhands it to uh, to Bergeron, who one times it in, and to and for the three-one dagger, and uh, and Buffalo ends up challenging it, super delay of game because uh, because Pasenak had uh, the stick at around chest and it's tight, and that ends up. Being the end of the, end of the game. Are Thirteen and two. Oh, now uh, tomorrow they have the uh, they have the Canucks, a team that is pretty far deep in that uh, in that race for Connor Bedard. To be fair, that Pacific con that Pacific Division looks kind of crap. Uh, if you want an idea of how crap that division is, is is here's their standings. At uh, at the top is uh, is Vegas Golden Knights with the same record as the Bruins, thirteen and two. Uh, the Kings are in, in second place at nine six and one, in for nineteen points. The Kraken are in third in that division for in in at eight five and two for eighteen points. And in Oilers have the same amount of points, but they're nine and seven. And and then after that, it just falls off. Uh, Flames have twelve points. And and Canucks and Sharks are tied at eight at eleven, and Ducks have nine. That 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 Pacific Division is awful. We're going against a team that um, that really wants to win the Bedard or Mitchkov sweepstakes. So what do we do? Worry about that. To, uh, we worry about that tomorrow, and you know, because tomorrow, I mean, we should win this. We we should we should win this. We're not Toronto against Anaheim, for God's sake. I mean, unlike them, we're actually uh, unlike them. We're actually putting in effort. Uh, we we're ac we're actually putting in effort from the start, uh, except for this game. Uh, it's it's a, it's complicated. 
that is going to do it for tonight. Thank you all so much for watching. Click like, click subscribe, click that notification bell, leave a comment down below. Oh, since the Bruins, uh, since the Bruins before this game had a, uh, had just a, uh, 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 had like a media thing in showing of like uh, who who every team who every player's role model was uh, is growing up uh, for hockey. Uh, I want to know who is your favorite player of all time, or who is the player that you respect the most of all time. Uh, have a good one uh, tonight, guys, and I will see and see you all. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.